What's going on, dudes and ladies, ladies and dudes? Welcome back to JD Plays Project Ozone 3. And the screen is stretched and madness is happening. What in the world? I'll tell you about it in just a minute. We've got an adventure to go on. Not quite going back to Twilight Forest yet soon, but we got a little in between that I want to take care of before we do. That being said, if you find yourself enjoying the video, or if you've enjoyed the series so far, don't be afraid to hit that like button. If you're feeling generous, hit that sub button. As always, remember I'm live streaming this content, and you can follow me on the social media platforms on the right-hand side, or feel free to come by and join the Discord server. All plugs aside, let's get started, shall we? All right, so uh, yeah, I've got a much different viewport. That's because I've activated speed level five via the abilities totems. I'm gonna play around with that for a bit, see what I think. Um, I've done some additional upgrading on my bow. We've added uh, synergy by using the lovely steel leaf as the other side of the bow. We got rid of the stone. So we can't repair with stone repair kits anymore, but we don't need to because it stays repaired because of this, right? And it, it's made it do a little bit more damage. Interesting to see how that works out and what kind of synergy we get out of it. Now, as you can see, there are lots of waypoints suddenly showing up in my world. That's because I went flying around and started looking at different biomes that we could find around the world. Okay, I found a bunch of slime islands and just kind of, you can see where all I flew and I started, like here's a nuclear wasteland we found. I haven't done anything there yet, but it's kind of crazy. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to find a spot that would be a cold biome and I found an ice plane over here and the idea is is that I wanted to get blizzards to spawn now I realized we could do things like RF tools and RF dimensions but I wanted to just see if this would work out if we could do it this way and it turns out that it does so we're gonna head that way but before we do right over here in this table I've got to get used to this speed viewport it's really jacking with me uh, I've made some soul vials okay this is just some fused quartz which if you want another recipe put some quartz into an alloy smelter it'll make fused quartz a fused quartz with solarium. We're going to grab these. And I think these are going to work for what I want to do, but we're going to find out one way or the other. So we're heading for this ice plane over here. We're going to fly way up into the sky. We're at a Y of 200 and climbing and just chewing through our, our jetpacks fuel source, but that's okay. We'll come over here. We'll shift right click this guy. Now we're getting power back, and now we'll just glide the rest of the way. And it does feel like having the speed attribute attached is in fact slowing us down for this type of travel. I can't, can't prove that. I could be wrong, but it does feel that way at the moment. But we'll see. Anyway, we're going to fly on out here a long way. And... It's about to be nighttime, so we're going to be getting there at just the right time. That'll be great. And as usual, uh, Mr. Adrian Von Ziegler providing the music. I don't know if it, I don't know if I have it loud enough for you guys to actually hear. It's always finicky between tracks, so. All right, closing in on the target. Should start seeing the land come into view soon. Go. And there's our platforms. So you can see it does snow out here. There's an Enderman just chilling on top of this building that I've built. And there's plenty of area for mobs to spawn here. Great, that's what we want. Matter of fact, hi. We're going to capture that Enderman. So I now have a soul vial with an Enderman. I could let him loose, but I'm going to keep him. All right. We're going to make use of that later. But for the time being, let's just keep him in there. Now, I've got a room made right here where other things could technically spawn, right? Um, what I'm going to do with this room this is going to be kind of part of the experiment that I wanted to run. Open this up for a second. Let's go in here. Uh, let's break this grass. Let's replace it with some actual grass. So we'll put it like here. Got to be careful because it is nighttime now. I want to get myself into a bad spot. Okay. I got two different tests that I want to experiment with here. 
Things are about to start spawning on the platform outside. I don't think it's a blood moon, so I think we're okay there. But this grass that I'm using inside. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and put this back, put this on, and then inside of, I think it's this bag, I should have some cursed earth. We're going to curse this earth. Bam. So now mobs can spawn like crazy in here, okay? And they are. They're already starting to try to spawn in there right now. It's good. I could start shooting them, right? So let's shoot this guy. Bam. I think I can go ahead. Let's see. I want to try something. If I tilt that, yeah. We got an ancient golem in there. There's a zombie in there. Anyways, I want things to be able to spawn on this platform. So if I come across here, they should start spawning. There we go. We're getting spawned. So we can see creepers spawning there. We can see there's another enderman, a couple zombies. Not what I'm looking for yet. What I'm looking for is a blizz. I want to capture a blizz. So we're going to go ahead and start shooting these guys. My arrows, because of the way they teleport, they will go all the way across there. Oop. Oop. I'm still not sure I like this speed. It's really jacking with my viewport. I may have to have to take that away. Now, we have to be careful because the mobs that are over there, they will start fighting. Okay? So be aware of that. But I do see something that I want, though. Now, I can I can glide back anytime. They can hit me, of course. Spider looks crazy. And the ancient golem seems to like to attack the uh, reapers. I'm gonna drop back down here right quick. Alright, I don't see any oh whoa, we got tons of arrows flying at us. They're fighting. Hey, there's a basalt. Uh, that's one of the mobs that I want. I do want to capture a basalt. Get over here. Let's just drop in. Let's capture him and move on. All right. We need to do that one more time. And this time we need to do that with a blizz. We've got a basalt. We need a blizz. We've already got a blaze spawn spawner, right? So we don't need to worry about blazes. We just need a blizz. And the reason we want that is because we need blizzes to make um, a certain type of powder for continuing certain upgrades, right? Shooting at me. I'm shooting at him. Who will win? Probably me. My arrows hit a lot harder. By the way, it's kind of interesting. Uh, there's a funny functionality here where you can zoom using Optifine and still fire your bow. So it's kind of like I have sniper vision. There's my blizz right there. All right, so the one guy I'm worried about over there are, is this Nitro Creeper. The Blizz is shooting at me. That's okay. I'm about to go shoot at him. Fly right over here, and we'll just say, Hi, buddy. Hi. Here we go. We have a captured Blizz. Mission successful. Now, let us let me make sure that I'm good here. We've got an Enderman, a Blizz, and a Basals. That's what I wanted. All right, let's head home. Now, the whole reason we want those things is because Blizzes drop Blizz rods. Uh-oh. Did my game just crash? It looks like it. Scary view. I kind of told the guys what's, what's going to happen is I'm going to start recording and my game's going to crash. But it didn't. Looks like we're okay. I'll need to restart after this recording session. But we've captured what we needed. So Blizzes and Basals, they both drop rods respective to their names. And we can break those down to get certain powders out. Just like we can get from a Blaze rod, we can get uh, Blaze powder. We can get Blizz powder, we can get Basals powder, and that's used in certain recipes that we need them for. Now, how you go about getting your blizz rods may be different, but for me, I decided I wanted to find a biome and just go capture one of these guys in an, an ender vial, soul vial, whatever, and we'll be able to attach that to a powered spawner down the road and spawn those at will. The other thing we could do is I could set up a mob farm over there and just let them roll in. You know, it's not a big deal, uh, but I've opted to go this other direction instead for now. All right, so we're flying home about 900 meters. I like the speed that we have right now and our ability to move around i do not like the viewport so i'm probably going to either take the speed off completely or at minimum reduce how effective it is
I'm still playing around with which abilities I like. I got rid of, I got rid of jump assist because we fly most of the time, so having the ability to jump all the time, not necessarily a requirement. All right, we're coming into our home. There go. There's the cows, the penguins, rabbits, all the good animals of our world, right? All of our homies. Drop on in here. And we'll let this guy start charging back up. Now, these guys are charging up a lot faster now. And the reason they're going to charge a lot faster is because I've actually upgraded all of our line over here to Redstone Energy Flux Duct, um, which transmits 9,000 RF per tick. And I've added an additional three uh, engines right here. And I tied both power grids, the upper and lower, together. And we added a second uh, wireless energetic infuser over here. So this guy is, is going up in power much faster. It may not seem like it, but that's because right now he's recharging the jetpack as well, excuse me, as well as himself. Now, with our Blizz, I've actually already gotten some Blizz rods from a previous attempt at running over there to destroy those guys. And what we get from this is just, like I said, Blizz powder. So what we can do with that is come over here to our pulverizer, throw it in here, and it's gonna produce four per Blizz powder or Blizz rod instead of two. So we got 20 of those. And what I want this for, what we're going to use this for, is making cryothium. Why do we care about cryothium? Well, I want to upgrade this guy to this guy. Then we need to be able to make... What was it? I'm sorry. Oh, it wasn't that. that that's not what I'm looking for. I don't want to do that upgrade, FYI. I want to use this right here for upgrading to uh, upgrade kits, Signalum upgrade kits, as well as this right here, a Signalum flux capacitor, which holds 16 million RF instead of 8 million. So it's giving me a better, bigger uh, upgrade there, and it allows me to start making the upgrades to these guys to put third tier upgrades, including on my dynamos, which would then allow me to get up to 360 RF per tick per dynamo, okay? So that's why I want Blizz Powder. It's used in a few other places as well, but that was my reasoning for wanting it. So that being said, since I've already got this guy sitting here and we've got some of this stuff now, right? What do we need to make the recipe? Just need some redstone and some snowballs. Okay, well, let's get some, we've got that, right? We made a glacial precipitator not too long ago, right here. It's got some snowballs on it. Let's take them. Get a little redstone. Little look here. Bam, and we will make Boom, 20 cryothium dust, great. Okay, so with that in hand, let's toss this in the middle. What do we need? We need some signalum, some redstone in this, and we can go ahead and upgrade that guy. I'm down. One, two, three, and two. I made the signalum a while back, but I did not have the cryothium, but now we do. Boom, that big boy's ready to go. We're gonna do it to both of them, actually. So now I can carry around 32 million RF, whereas before I was only carrying around 16 million. And I can also transmit it at a much higher rate than I could before. So that's freaking great, right? Uh, I'm very happy about that. Now I can look into upgrading this guy, right? This guy has 8 million RF, uh, runs at 8,000 RF a tick. And prior to this, the recipe for this required this guy, right? It had 800,000 and it ran at 4,000 RF a tick. So Changing from this to this was very much worth it because we got 10 times more power, but only double the power usage. However, changing to this is not necessarily as worth it to me. Because if we look, this while going up by 10 times the power, it also goes up by 10 times the usage. So it's it's gonna go run out just as quickly as it would before. That being said, it will run at a faster rate. And yeah, we can now upgrade these guys into these guys and the uh, these guys hold 25 million RF a pop. Uh, pyrothium dust is a little bit easier for me to make, right? So I can make that all day. Um, the, I don't think that there's a better jetpack than this. The only thing better than this would be going to a creative jetpack. And I don't know that we can actually make that. It says we can, but I don't believe that that's real. We'll look into it down the road. <laughs> Anyways. All right. So 
Um, since we're here and talking about it, why not go ahead and, ahead and upgrade these guys right quick, right? So it was pyrothium we need to make. Right here. And this is just some blaze powder, some sulfur, and some redstone. All right, well, we've got sulfur right here. Let's take four of them. Let's get eight of these. Oh, I got ten, so... Okay, there's ten of those, and then some redstone, right? So, five of these. My mouse likes to double-click a lot when I single-click, so that's why I get strange amounts. All right, there's just some pyrothium. So it's going to be more or less the same thing except for we need to have enderium ingots all right how do we get enderium ingots well we need to pour molten enderium into a case guess what we have that right we've been we've been sitting over here harvesting molten enderium off of this cow that's part of why i wanted that cow because now i can take this by the bucket let's just grab several buckets of it real quick because i don't want to move this tank we only need a few ingots but we'll take what's here That works. Okay. And come to this guy. Look, there's some molten enderium in here right now. We can just pour this directly in. And there we go. We've got five blocks which is nine ingots so around 51 ingots worth of enderium sitting right there which can be used for all kinds of stuff right we're going to use it to make some ingots right quick all right so just turn that bad mama gem on and here's the fun part um even this satchel right here can be upgraded right if i, I could upgrade this satchel to signalum level and then i could turn around and upgrade it to enderium level and we're going to do that because we actually have the resources to do that finally for now i just want to get a couple of these and if you remember, we made our arrow shaft out of Enderium. That's where our new arrows came from. So let's bring this over here. These to the side. Put some redstone around it. Drop this guy down. And there we go. There's our new big boy flux capacitor. Now I've got power for years, so to speak. Uh, stone again. Now, I haven't really made Signalum in bulk yet, but I will start making things like this in bulk soon. It's too fast now. It doesn't feel comfortable. Kind of scary, to be honest. <laughs> All right, let's look at upgrading the satchel right quick, because we've already got one of those that's going to take a while to charge. So the satchel, if I want to upgrade this guy, we need some Electrum Nuggets. Well, that's no problem, right? One, two, three. And then we need some Signalum ingots. One, okay. Bam. And let's let's look before we do the upgrade, let's look at how big it was. Okay. So this guy, standard chest size. Pretty easy to accommodate. This one, he's gonna get a bit bigger. An extra line of inventory space. And so the satchel is now growing, and that's great. So if I take this and take it a step further. There we go. Boom. Uh is there another step for this? I can't remember. I don't think so. That's as big as they get, right? Stores and collects items can be secured. Um, yeah, I think there's a way to set this up to automatically scoop items, but I don't remember how you do it. So I'll look into that later. Anyway, so just, you know, just some quality of life improvements. Let's look at, at this speed thing. Let's see about taking this down a notch. So I've, I've learned to start storing all of the abilities that I like the most right here on a single pedestal or on a single uh, potion. And I can just keep that with me and alternate them as I want to. So let's turn the speed nut value down to a three instead of a... So I'm feeling fast still. And now I can still sprint if I need to. I'm not feeling like I'm so zoomed out now. It doesn't feel quite as nasty as it did before. Right, how are we doing with our enderium over here? Doing, looking good. How much do we got left in there? Let's turn this off. It's poured enough. We'll leave some of that in there as molten enderium in case we need it for something. Because enderium actually gets used for quite a few things, right? We can make these resonant upgrade kits. Of course, to have this, you need to have the kit that's on that comes before it. And that's the other thing that we're able to make now because we got all the blizz powders. But there's our quest for enderium ingots. Huzzah. 
Now we're going to be able to hold power for days, which is great. All right, so how do we use these soul vials? These guys get used inside. We need, we need a soul binder, right? And we need a powered spawner. Now, soul binder is dependent upon you having this slice and splice, okay? Let's look at that real quick. Soul binder. Is it two words? Yeah, okay, here we go, soul binder. So to make this, you need one of each head. You need this soul machine chassis. We have all of this stuff. Let's make one of these real quick. This is easy. Run over here. Do, 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 do. And let's see. We got heads up here. All right, we need a skelly skull, zombie head, creeper head, and which which enderman head was it? It's just the ender IO one. I don't think that's that one. I think that's this one right here. Okay, so we got those. All right, let's run back. Da, da, da. Feel like I'm on turbo speed. It's great. This is a soul machine chassis. Okay, we needed what else? Uh, for solarium. Here. Great. Should be able to just shift click that to place. There we go. We got a soul binder now. All right. Let's go hook this up to our power network. And now we're just kind of throwing stuff together. I haven't really organized it yet. Okay, it needs a capacitor, right? Every Ender I.O. machine is going to say, give me a capacitor, bro. And we've got to accommodate it. Now, currently, we've got a basic one in here. We've got some shiny ones in here. There's a lot of ways to get capacitors. We could just start opening up goodie bags until we get some capacitors if we want. But I should have a couple more laying around somewhere. Now, I forget which container it is, but one of the containers that I have right down that I have down right now disables the T functionality for searching and it drives me crazy because that's like one of my favorite functionalities in the game but it is what it is. 938 RF per tick right there. So we'll use that one. Alright, so with this we can now take a soul vial and a spawner and turn it into a powered spawner, right? But it's going to take XP as well. So we have to have the XP on us to afford that. But let's say I want to make this Blizz spawner. Let's do the Enderman first. The Enderman's pretty easy to, to recreate. Actually, you know what? We won't even do an Enderman. Let's just take a Soul Vial right here. Come over to our mob farm. We're going to grab some random mob out of here. What do we have? Got a zombie, zombie, skeleton. Which one? Well, which one seems the most desirable? Be cool if they had spawned an ancient golem as we walked up. There we go. We, we took a, a zombie. And he's almost dead. So, we'll bring this back over here. Alright, so if we put... It's going to tell us... That right there. It won't... By the way, if you come off of that screen, it's going to kick the vial out. So make sure you pick it back up. Let's get a, a, a spawner, a broken spawner. We'll just take a zombie spawner. That'll work. The spawners do not have to match the soul you're putting into it. There's this. There's this. And it says, hey, I need at least eight experience to perform this action. Use my experience and do it. So it's it's working. It's getting things done. You can see the progress right here. We'll be able to come back and see it in a little bit. The head will start to spin right there. Huzzah. We're making our first spawner. Okay. Now what we want to actually make as a real spawner is going to be that seriously take three of those throw them in there keep firing it'll show you right here other things that we can make in here right so if we have the soul of a villager and an emerald we can make an enticing crystal. Soul of an Enderman and a Vibrant Crystal, we can get an Ender Crystal. A Shulker plus a Vibrant Crystal will get us a Prescient? Prescient? Not sure, that's a new one. Uh, Z-Logic Controller plus a any kind of a zombie or whatever will get us a Franken Zombie. Um, we'll get Sentient Ender as a... I think this is like a type of capacitor, I can't remember. We can turn up, to create any type of broken spawner into a powered spawner.
Actually, I think what we're going to get here is going to be a broken spawner that we then can take a step further. But let me. So let's say we had this one, right? Okay, it's not going to tell me any more than that. That's fine. We'll just wait on this to be done and then we'll talk about it. All right, while that's getting knocked out, what else do I need to do right now? Anything else I was wanting to talk about today? Remember. Do. I don't think so. I think we, I have most things like under wraps. I have been debating how I want to proceed with my arrows, okay? My arrow, they one of the things that we love about it, right, is how fast it repairs. So right now, I'm we can see down in the lower left corner, I'm at 356 out of 684 durability. And it's just shooting up. And that's how many shots that I have, right? The faster that goes up, the better. And that's happening because of having the steel leaf. Um, I still have three... Well, four modifications left on this, but I don't really know what I want to do. I could put beheading on it and get up to a 40% chance to behead mobs. I could put more sharpening on it. And I mean, if I max out one round of sharpening, it gives me about 1.4 extra damage, but I don't know that that's worth it. So I'm trying to decide what I want to continue to do with the upgrades to my arrows. With my bow, it's we lost a bit of our draw speed, but the only thing that there's really left to do on this is add draw speed. So every level it gains, we're just putting draw speed on there. But the arrows are a little bit of a different story because they're what actually does, you know, they're the weapon that you're using. So having luck on there gets better drops and having sharpening, you know, obviously more damage. We could put necrotic if we wanted to pull away health. We could put beheading if we want a chance to get heads. It's kind of at our um, choosing what we're going to do with that. Now for this thing to work, the next thing we're going to need is a powered spawner. Okay, this is a powered spawner. And for that, we need a Z-Logic controller, two of these Vibrant Crystals, a Soul Machine. Now, how do we get the Vibrant Crystals? That's Vibrant Alloy around an Emerald. How do we get Vibrant Alloy? Well, this comes from... I'll go. There we go. Alloy Smelter. We take Energetic Alloy and cook it with an Enderpearl. Well, we can do that. That's not a problem, right? So we've got some Energetic Alloy already over here right there if we take let's say four of these and let's grab four ender pearls we can slam those together inside of our alloy smelter right down here this guy and these guys and that'll get us some energetic alloy right excellent it's almost done great okay so we, went, we needed to get some vibrant crystals. So let's get some emeralds. Round these real quick. There we go. There's a couple of vibrant crystals. I'll leave these here for now. I'll sort this out in a bit. All right. Actually, I don't want those there because that's kind of where I've been doing the crafting. But that's fine. So we'll take this. Put these to the sides. So what else did we need? We needed some electrical steel. How do we get electrical steel? Well, it's going to come back to the alloy smelter again. Silicon, tiny coal, and iron. Okay, that's easy enough. Take a stack of iron. Let's take a stack of sand. And let's take a stack of charcoal. Put the sand. into our sag mill doing work for me right now okay and it's going to create silicon and i'm using flint to increase the odds of getting silicon because it's not a one for one it's not guaranteed there's other ways to get it this is just how i'm doing because it it's quick easy and i don't have to think about it all right there's some silicon let's throw some charcoal in here all right it's going to start making pulverized charcoal for me okay we'll come back to that in a second Throw these bad boys in here. This guy's done. We got our soul ball back. And we now have our zombie spawner, right? Now, this was already a zombie spawner. I didn't have to do that. So anything that already exists as a spawner, you can just combine with uh, an anvil. But I wanted to make sure I wasn't going to screw this up because I haven't done it in a long time. But So we have this helmet crab spawner. I want that blizz to be added to that. So let's send that in there and let it get done. This will be done soon. Okay, so we're going to take our pulverized charcoal. 
and our iron and our silicone and we're going to stick them in here this this and this wait wait wait! did i do that wrong i may have it's been a while since i've made this that's okay i can still use that stuff pulverized coal it only lets me use coal i think right yeah we can't use charcoal for this that's okay we can use that to make more industrial black dye if we need to or for making steel that's not a big deal i we'll have to do actual coal which is fine because i haven't really been using coal for hardly anything lately uh stack of that in fact my creosote production and stuff has stopped i need to go look at that is it full on creosote 256 256 yet yeah. all right cool i'll need to get a bigger, bigger tank going there we can get this started though chewing dead wood and stuff there we go this will get us our electrical steel i'll come back and get some more of this in a bit that'll get me so i think i need four actually right Powered spawner? Yeah, we do. And then if you remember, we've been making these Z-Logic controllers right here. We were using those to make advanced uh, item filters. But now, we're going to use it here. These down. This and this. Uh, this guy. And then I think we need a... Is it a zombie head? Or is it any head? Any head will do. Okay. We'll run over here. We'll grab ourselves a head right quick. Do I have the most of? Creepers. And now we've got our very own powered spawner. Okay. Now, powered spawner has to be combined in an anvil. Which so happens we've got some anvils right here, right? I snatched some from uh, I want to make sure that I didn't just drop off a soul valve and it so we grabbed these as we were running through one of the mazes let's set it down right here it's just about done it's out of power it looks like why is it out of power how are you out of power or is this one just taking a long time? It's just taking a long time. Okay. This is okay, my friend. Some more of that electrical steel made. And when we're pulverizing coal, the cool thing is, is we have a chance of getting sulfur. So this is a way that we can produce sulfur now. And once again, any additional that I happen to produce, no big deal. That just means I can use it to make steel. So the sag mill is really nice by being able to throw this flint at this to increase our um, output. I think there are other balls we can make. I think that you can type in grinding. Yeah, grinding balls. And it tells you what the output is. So this is going to give me 120% main output, 125% bonus output, and power use 85%. The better the item you do it with, so for example, if we do dark steel, 200% bonus output. That's that's big. You know, that's, that's really nice. So dark steel, you just put five of these, you get 24 of those guys. You get dark steel right here by combining obsidian, iron, and coal together. And it's coal powder, by the way. So the exact stuff that we're using right now. So it, it's, it's a very cool system. That's just part of what I like about Ender IO. Is there's just a lot of detail to it and things that you can do to optimize things. Um, it provides a lot of the same machines that Thermal does or any other uh, mod out there. But the way things tie together and the way they're able to interact makes it a lot of fun to me. I forgot I had zombie heads up here because <laughs> I had automated making Z-Logics for a little bit. Almost there. Let's go ahead and put this spawner back. We're not going to do anything with this for the moment. Now, so we have this helmet crab spawner. We have a minotaur spawner. We could hook these up and use them right now, but I'm going to wait for this guy because what I want are those blitz spawners. Blizz spawners. I don't think Blitz are in the game anymore, are they? Let's look. Blitz. Yeah, they're still in the game. But it's still possible to get Blizz rods. This is for Erothium uh, pow powder. So you've got Cryothium, cold. Pyrothium, hot. Erothium, which I guess is uh, air. And then Basals, which I don't think this... Did they change it? Yeah, Petrothium. Like petrol, I guess? You can use this to straight up melt some stuff down though, without even having to take it through anything else. Kind of crazy. 
All right, so here is our soul vial and here is our blizz spawner. So now we want to take our blizz spawner over here to the anvil, throw in a powered spawner, throw in a blizz. It's going to cost us 16 XP. We have that and we will get out of there a blizz spawner. Bam. Okay. So I think if I have a lever, I could be about to screw up my world, but that's okay. We're going to risk it for the biscuit because I have a lever somewhere. We're going to spawn some of these guys. Is that in my bag? That lever? I know I have a bunch of levers made there. Let's hook this guy up to power and hit it once. Okay, so we want this dude to have redstone active with signal. That way it can't just start popping things out. We have to actually let it spawn something. Okay, we need to give it a, a capacitor, right? So there's its capacitor. It's ready. There's it's got some power. It's ready. All right, let's do it. Turned it on. Can't remember if it's got a... It, it's, it's working. Out of power, it's like, hey, I'm trying to spawn one for you. And it'll, you can have it show you the range and all that good jazz. We're not going to worry about that. This thing is probably like killing my power grid right now to do this. But in a minute, we'll spawn a blizz. <laughs> and look, we've got this guy filled up just about. This guy's going to be next, and I'm going to have so much power. Oh. Let's see, I want to get a basal spawner made. And then we'll probably do an enderman. A minotaur for each of them. to work 56% done great forgot how you do the show range thing a way to see what it's spawn range is that's okay working on it and there's a lot of things that we can do to speed these the spawners up um, I'm just not worried about it right now go 81 82 get our sword ready so we can murder rate him 6 87 you can do it probably better if I had a much better capacitor for this and I think if we were using like a let's see, capacitor One of these might be really nice to use for it. We'll have to look into those. Oh, 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 turn it off. Look, we got spawns. All right, let's kill these guys. Ah. All right, so they're shooting at me. I'm going to shoot at them, but I'm going to be close. Here goes my rod. And that explosion sound, you're going to hear that anytime you kill a blaze style creature. There we go. So, I'm killing them outdoors, but we were still able to pick up six new blaze or blizz rods, thanks to this guy. And, yeah, we literally just, we're, we're able to make blizz rods when we want to now. I'll, what I'll do is I'll set up a room with a absorption hopper, where they can only spawn in that room. I can kill them, their loot will get sucked up. And we can make blizz rods at will now, which lets us make cryothium at will, which lets us upgrade machines to the signalum level. As we've already seen, we can make pyrothium really easily, so we can upgrade them beyond that. But yeah, getting blizz powder, no longer a problem. Freaking awesome. I'm stoked about it. Happy to have my first powered spawner. So now I don't necessarily have to depend on mob farms like this anymore to get the stuff that I need. In fact, I could literally shut this down, put my spawners in there, turn them on and let the mobs just spawn in here. Now for the blizzes, it wouldn't, it may not work quite as easily as, you know, as doing it another way, but it would, it would work, you know, overall. So yeah, we win. Huzzah. Good day.
that's it for this one. Next time we're going to be going back into Twilight Forest. We're going to be doing some more boss fights there and hopefully making some more uh, progression down that line. I believe we're at the point where we're going to be heading into the Yeti Caves and then up onto the uh, Glacier. So that should be a lot of fun. That being said, boys and girls, as always, if you liked it, like it. If you'd like to see more, like it. Hit that subscribe button. Check out the social media platforms on the right-hand side of the screen. Come hang out with me on stream, and I will see you guys next time. Y'all take it easy. Laters. Stream, I'll see you in a bit.